The Zeno 2 has been showing some stability issues as of late, and also the lens flare issue is cropping up. Got all that and a whole lot more coming up next. Hey everyone, Bill from Build a Drone Reviewer, where I make drone and drone related videos. If you're new here, welcome and consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. With that, let's begin. The other night I hosted Rotor Talk Live and was joined by co-hosts Marcus Crawford, Ron Brown, and Lauren Donar. We spent some time talking about the Xeno 2 and we discussed the stability issues. We looked at the flights that Ron and Marcus took and had a discussion regarding that. Also, a lens flare issue when the Xeno 2 is facing the sun and a camera ribbon cable issue. So without any further ado, let's roll that clip in its entirety. We're gonna talk about drones tonight. We're gonna to have a good time talking about drones tonight. Buyers free yeah. drones. Yes, okay. And you guys remember how uh, Tale of Two Cities, Charles Dickens' book, how it opened? It, it was, was the best of times, best it was the times. worst of times. And it was the worst of times, okay. Yeah. And we're going to talk about Xeno 2 stability issues, all right? Now, Ron had a different experience than Marcus did with the Xeno 2 stability. So I'm going to have Ron go first here and tell us how his experience was on his, I'll call it for lack of a better term, stability test with a Xeno 2. This weekend, I think it was Saturday, I went out to the beach and I took a couple drones out. It wasn't a comparison test. I just happened to be hovering two drones. I hovered the Xeno 2 and the Scudia 2. Because everything's two nowadays or whatever. But um and and you know, um I thought that the Skydio 2 would show the Xeno 2 up, but it didn't. I mean, the you know, it was a windy day and they both got blown a little bit to the left and the right or back and forth, however you want to say it. But as far as keeping their distance from the ground, I put them between six to seven feet high. And that darn Zeno, I mean, he it, it it took a while for me to get the Zeno calmed down and over to that spot. But once I had in that spot, that thing, that thing barely moved up and down at all. And I, I'm gonna say I let it go there for a minute or better, you know, and it did I'm gonna say just as good as the Scudio did. The Scudio hung better from going back and forth, but as far as height, they were pretty much even. <laughs> the only thing I should have filmed off camera is the Scudio, as soon as it took off, it got its bearings. And it and you know I could move it right over where the Zeno took off and it kind of like was all over the place for a couple minutes. Like Bill says, you need a good amount of open space to take off a land in Scudio too. But once I got it, once I got it, you know, you know, homed in there, it helped. But I got an update on that story. I'll make this quick. Tonight okay. I went out and I took again, I took a couple drones out, actually the same two drones, the twos I call them, Scudio 2 and the um, the Zeno 2. And this week I, I took the Zeno up from one of the 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 seawalls or whatever on the beach and um so i hit it straight but it was nothing around the seawall and that thing went went straight up you know um i i guess i i don't know if i had the control of it went straight up and it just hung there it didn't move even on takeoff i mean it didn't move up and down it didn't move side to side that thing just took off and hung there like it was a dgi drone so I, there was no updates today so i don't know why it did better all i can guess is the, this area had less magnetic interference than the other area I was flying at, but that this baby was per. I didn't even do a hover test coming down because that takeoff, it, I had it, it. I was on a wall about four or five feet high. It took off, you know, whatever, another five feet. It, it, it just again, it just stayed right there, and it wasn't real windy today, but there was a breeze going on the beach. So I mean, just just uh, this is a couple hours ago. I mean, I I, I could have been happy with hover. Can I duplicate this hover again? I don't I don't know, but as of right now. Um, it, it was a great day to hover. It was so, a great Marcus, day to hover. So, Marcus, what are your uh, most recent experience with hovering your uh, Scudio 2 um, in, in various wind conditions and locations? Well, I, I presume you're meaning the Xeno 2, not the Scudio 2. Oh, so I'm always, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no problem. No, I, don't, I, don't mean, I, I, won't, I won't mean to say Scudio the rest of the show. If I say Scudio, I mean to say Xeno. Oh, that's, that's fine, Ron. I just want thanks, to. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Ron, all I can say is evidently you got the good one because uh, uh, poor Jimmy Perez here in the in the chat, uh, his flew away today. Had a disconnection and it lost a, and and it flew away. So, Jimmy, I want you to know uh, that's just the worst thing that can happen to anybody with a drone. And and I'm so sorry to hear that. And any one of us would be gutted 
uh, to see something like that uh, happen. So uh, in any case, uh, you know, you just made me think about something, Jimmy. You know, there is that find aircraft mm-hmm. on, on, on the app now, and I've never messed with it. I've never tried around with it. As long as you got battery power, it might help you. But anyway, that aside, Ron, to your uh, question, you got the good one, evidently. Because <laughs> if you watch my if you watch my video, you want to see the hubs and drop. <laughs> Let me tell you, I think went <laughs> up and came down. <laughs> uh, but 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 listen, here's what I'm not doing: is I am not trashing the drone. I really like that drone. So. Uh, it, 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 it actually, you know, what I'm talking about it, it moving around and hovering and stuff, listen for fine work, like for, for instance, you could do with your Mavic mini, right? Your Mavic mini is very stable and so forth. I just don't think the Zeno two is going to be that kind of drone. And in fact, I was telling Bill, I think my Zeno one is, is more stable than my Zeno two. I mean, it moves, it moves around a lot. It's got those downward sensors. It's always moving around, doing something. Uh, so I don't know if it's just mine. I don't know. I don't know. You know, uh, I know. Well, I know for a fact other people have had the same experience uh, that I've had. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't even know what to say. But there is a, a ton, a ton to like about that drone. I mean, I, when every time I fly that thing, I you just can't hardly wipe the grin off of my face because uh, it's so fast. And it and and we're talking about stability, but when you have it in the air, it handles good. Now I'm not going to tell you that it is as precise and handles precisely like my Mavic 2, for instance, because it doesn't. But it but it handles good, and it's got a good camera on it. And uh, I, in my video, I did a couple of those. I did the orbit mode around that cell tower, and it did it perfectly. I did the uh, line fly mode where, where you can set the drone to automatically fly in a line, and I had it going sideways. And now why would you want to do that? The advantage of that is is then you're able to focus on framing your picture. You're not flying the drone then. So you set it up beforehand. You can focus on, on framing your picture and and getting all of those uh settings right in that kind of situation and and the drone does that kind of stuff uh very well so uh anyway that was probably more information than you wanted ron but oh that was great I I think, a- see see i've been holding my zeno to you that's the way it hovered outside today <laughs> oh that's and that's real cool. quick before we never get back to this i never quite understand line flight marcus you need to do a tutorial on line fly did, well, did, I, I kind of did a mini tutorial on that last video that I posted yesterday. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, it. What it like I said, well, it's just like what what God, what did DJI call it, Bill? I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, do you uh, want to call he, it? He, 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 most most people call it headless mode, I guess. Well, well, the Zeno Two has headless mode as well. The, you're not. This is an automated flight mode, Ron. That you're not touching the stick. Right, but it's but it's not, but it's different from waypoints. Well, it's it's basically think of it as this, Ron, setting starting at one point, ending at another. So that would be similar to a waypoint. So it's kind of like a baby waypoint, exactly. And you a set poor man's you, waypoint. You set the yeah. angle of the drone, and and uh, that allows you to then, uh, and and it brings up the map when you're doing it. So so you know exactly where the drone's going to start. You know exactly where it's going to end in a hover. Uh, and uh, then, then you're able to then focus on your camera and, and on the gimbal. That's a uh, good thing. Now, yeah. I got a question for both of you, okay? Because one of the things that I experienced with the Xeno One was crabbing. And what I mean by crabbing for everybody is, you know, I'm, I'm pulling the stick forward and we're, you know, having the, having the I'll call it the Hubson Drift, okay? <laughs> How, how's the Xeno Two with that? Is it better? Well, that's interesting, uh, Bill, that you experienced that because I can tell you uh, my original Xeno, they solved that a few uh, firmware updates back, and it pretty much goes straight as an arrow. Uh, and and, and to, the, for the short answer, the Xeno 2 is fine. I have experienced no crabbing, anything weird along those lines. In fact, I will say this. You know, I, I'm kind of complaining about stability and stuff, so forth. The Zeno 2 is 
has so many less problems than the original Zeno did when <laughs> it was first introduced. It's it's not even a good comparison. Uh, Ron? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know as hardly any crabbing. I mean, the, the sticks aren't quite as precise you know, as your typical DJI drone. But once you figure that out and you and you compensate your flying skills or whatever, you all you have no problems flying this thing straight or whatever. Again, it, it flies again, the sticks just not quite as precise as DJI, but again, you in my mind, I can easily adjust to something that's less precise and, and, and make do with it. I mean, I can make all the maneuvers I want with the Zeno too, um, as far as manual orbits and moves and stuff like that. It just um just a little bit, you know, different stick input than a DJI drone. But I, I think uh, come next Monday or, you know, whenever you, you know, whenever the first day you get to fly it is, I, I don't think that you'll, you know, um, you'll experience any crabbing or, or precise, precise flying issues as you would on a, on a Xeno one, or at least the early software version of the Xeno one. That's really good to hear. One of the things that I have to say to both of you is one of the things, that's been universal since you guys got it and, and have been have been posting videos is the quality of the video to me. Okay, the quality of the video rivals. I, I would I would I would say a DJI drone. It really does. It's the details are really super sharp. I mean, you know, I, I'm looking when Marcus is up there in the mountains in the background, and you know, the horizon is level. There's no issues with the horizon right. at all. I mean, the, and Ron, you know, when you're at the beach. Um, you know, those details are, are just super sharp. I mean, it, it really is. Guys, uh, you know, Hobson has done Hobson does some things right. And and I got to say this for that camera. I think they've done a good job with that. Well, Bill, I want to I want to you know, you brought up your your Dickens reference to Tale of Two Cities. Well, I mean, with the Zeno 2, I'm happy with the camera, but it's a Tale of Two cameras. When you have the camera not pointing at the sun. I'm very pleased with the camera. It, it ranks up there, you know, uh, you know, not with my, you know, Zeno 2 Pro, I mean, my Mavic 2 Pro, but it ranks up there with my 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 favorite ones. But the minute you get it anywhere pointed at the sun or, or the, you know, or any, you know, kind of bright light source, that's when it falls apart. Uh, then it looks like, you know, then it's not anywhere near my uh, uh, favorite cameras. And um, I, I mean, I've tried, I've tried going all the way up and putting the, uh, the, the Freewell N, ND32 polarized filter on it, and it didn't seem to help much. Mm. Uh, today, today I went out and played with the exposure settings, which I, I did the first day I had the drone. I thought it kind of made the video look kind of muddy or whatever, but we've had a couple software updates, so I'm going to look at the, I, I I just flew right before I came home, got in the shower, and got ready for the show, but I will look at it after the show and give everybody a, a full report. But um, again, for me, it's a tale of two cameras. The one camera, I love it. The other camera, eh, you know, it's uh, you know, it, it it's it's not good, you know. Uh, and I don't think it's going to be a good sunset camera unless uh, Hubson could do a firmware update that'll maybe um, fix that, or if I can figure out a way to dial in the settings between the exposure and the shutter set, set settings and everything else. Marcus, uh, what's your um, opinion of the? Uh, the Hubson Zeno 2 camera. I said the right drone this time. You did. Uh, well, so I, I am like you two. I'm impressed with the camera. I agree with what Ron said. Uh, it's not so good when it's pointed at the sun. The other thing that I have noticed is, yeah, Bob Rudder said uh, course lock in a DJI drone. I, uh, that, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Give that man a free uh, T-shirt. That, that, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If we had them, <laughs> uh, <laughs> when we get it, whenever we ever get a t-shirt. Yeah. 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 Uh, gosh, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, yeah, you, I, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, the camera. No, that was my the camera. And, and, uh, and, yeah. and then you said, you said somebody made a point about the, oh, the course lock. Hey, you were talking about your impressions of the video quality. So yeah, yeah. On, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I'm sorry. I truly am a senior citizen. Uh, so did you get uh, carded this morning? I did not get carded. No, they, I thought with that beard, you they may have thought you were fifty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's possible. A young man of uh, fifty. Heck, I'd settle for being a young man of sixty. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 yeah, <laughs> I'd love, uh, I'd love to see fifty again. How about you, Bill? 
<laughs> at 50? I, 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 would, I, would I would take 55 at this time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. That, that's the end of the old man show, whatever. Marcus, what do you think of that Z2 camera? I, I love it. This is great. Uh, so the camera, the one thing that I've noticed, and Ron, I noticed it a little bit in your video, and I went back and looking, looking through my raw video, and I've seen it in other people's Xeno 2 video that they post. There is, upon occasion, you'll get a little micro vibration or shake in that camera. Now, it's especially evident when the drone is descending. When it's coming down, you'll see a little bit of that shake. Uh, I, and then I've seen it sometimes when the drone is coming to a stop. Uh, you know, often if you're in a hover, it's pretty good. You don't you don't see it much, but uh, yeah, I mean it's it happens. Uh, so what, what? And that's something that has to do with the, the those dampers, those uh, silicone dampers that are dampening the uh, uh, the, the gimbal. Uh, evidently, I don't know what about the design, but they're not quite doing their job. Now, the other thing that people will tell you, and it's true, is often that's a sign of a prop being out of balance. Uh, and then, you know, when we had the pro kind of props that we had on the Phantoms, you, you could balance those props. But these these props that are are, are screwed on, I, if anybody knows how to balance them, I, I don't. I mean, there, was, I don't there may be a way, but... Yeah, yeah. You know, you're talking, it's interesting you're talking about those dampeners because that was a failure point on the X Star Premium from Autel. Okay. Um, because the camera was resembled a lot. I mean, the way it sat in there and everything, that's why they had so many patent kind of concerns with DJI and Autel because it looked a lot like the Phantom. But they said that was a failure point. And somebody told me right away. You know, make sure you buy some more of those. And he said, I would advise replacing them like every three months because they just they they would just wear out. And and what what somebody had had told me as far as a dampener is is, is like, um, it, it, it's it's like now with the front wheel drive cars, um, you know, it's 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 like the shock absor absorber, okay? Right. And if you absorb that shock for the whole camera assembly while you're flying and to make it, you know, not so it's like, eh, just so it looks like you're just flying nice and straight and smooth, which you usually are. Um, DJI has a real good dampening system. Okay. On theirs. I, I will say that, but you know, notwithstanding, um, you know, you know, and, and the other thing that I wanted to talk about too, and I know Marcus actually ordered it was um, the cable issue with the Xeno two for the, for the, for the camera. Hey Bill, can I expand a little bit? I, I did not to uh, about what you were talking about what, about the dampers or sure, dampers. go for it. So, a, 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 a way that I was able to prove that is with my original Zeno, I had a DJI Osmo Pocket, and and we all know that it has a really good three-axis gimbal on it, right? So, I, what I did is I zip tied that baby to. Uh, to the original Zeno, the Hubson, the, the original Hubson. And that way I had uh, a video from the Osmo Pocket as well as the camera uh, on the original Zeno. Well, the, the, the stuff that came off the Osmo Pocket, uh, even though it, it has a nice stabilized platform on it, uh, was just full of jello. Now, why? Because I just had it strapped on there solid. So all the vibration of the drone itself was really vibrating that camera. Now, when I brought the drone to a stop, hey, it would get pretty good. It would kind of clear up and get pretty good. So that's the same thing with those little silicone dampers. That's why that's why they're in there, and they're supposed to isolate that uh, that gimbal from the rest of the drone. So I just wanted to describe that. For and, people, and, and before, we know more about it than I do. But and before we move on to the uh, the ribbon cable, yeah, I I, I definitely have seen the uh, the micro you know stutters Marcus thought about. But on video, I'm probably going to drop tomorrow where I'm flying, and I, I I turn around, but I think it's the answer. I turn around, I saw the gimbal take a take a big dive, Marcus. I mean, I saw it go boom, you know, right down, and I don't think it was due to a high wind. I mean, I've seen the I've seen the mm drone that we'll talk about later on i've seen that thing in high wind it pushed the 
gimbal straight down. Right. And I, every time I bring it up, it gets pushed back down. But the Zeno 2 gimbal is uh, very robust. And what I mean by that is a lot of a lot of drones, foldable drones, if you put the ND fill on them before you start the drone up, it can't pass the gimbal test. And, mm -hmm. But the Zeno 2 gimbal, it's so strong, you can put any filter on that thing. It has no problems passing the... Uh, the gimbal test with, with the filter already on. But uh, again, I, I saw, and I, I think this happened without any type of ND filter on. It was, I, I think it's from Saturday. You know, I just saw it just, boop, it just, it just went right down all the way on its own. And I brought it back up. I didn't have an issue with the rest of the flight, but uh, so, I mean, it has, it has little shutters, but I, I've seen some, I'm going to call them floppy ones too, where it just boop, flop, flops down. And I didn't have Marcus's, uh, function button set to bring it back up real quick at that point again um and and i you know watch marcus's uh bit i think it's a couple of videos ago where he demonstrates the function button and i wanted i had a point i was going to say about my flight tonight i was going to pass on some real good information but the old man syndrome is already out my mind so <laughs> if, if Marcus, if you have another comment on the uh gimbal issues i'll throw it back to you we could throw it to bill for the ribbon well, so one more thought on that gimbal, and and uh, that is if you look at my original, my first flight with the Zeno 2 when I was out at the Snake River Canyon, I was out over uh, the canyon, o over the Snake River. I threw it into sport mode, and I headed right straight back for me. And this is a really fast drone, folks. I mean, it really gets, gets going. And yeah, I think we had a combination of that. So I'm putting the drone in a high speed mode, right? And then we had a crosswind and boy, it threw that gimbal into a tizzy. But, but what I will say was, uh, as soon as I got back over and I stopped and I hovered for a second, the gimbal recovered and it, it found its level perfectly again and it was fine for the rest of the flight. So I remember that that could happen occasionally with the original Mavic Pro, not the Mavic 2, but the original Mavic Pro, the way that gimbal was designed, you that could happen to you sometimes in high winds and in the just the right situation. And then, like Ron said, we've all seen it with the Mini. So, uh, anyway, that's... Uh, no, and that's a good the point. Thought. And the only, my only, my final thought before we talk about the ribbon cable is... Uh, Ron brought up a good point about ND filters and putting them on there because the first time, I, and they weren't free well, they were some kind of aftermarket that I was given to test and to put on the Mavic 2. Holy crap. I mean, it's just like right away, it's just like gimbal overload error, gimbal, you know, it's just like no matter what I did was until I put the, the regular lens back on the Mavic 2, it wasn't it wasn't going to do it. And then, and then I got some free wells for it and it was fine. Go figure. I mean, it's yeah. You know, I, I bought the Power Pros for the Mavic 2 Pro, and and you you take the you know the the I'm I'm gonna call it the lens off, uh, and then you put the Power Pro on instead, and it has no problems at all because the same exact weight. As yeah, the, uh, exactly. the Anafi is famous for that, right, Ron? The Anafi. Yeah, you have to put them on hot. The Anafi will not pass the camera test with yeah. any of the Freewell filters. Now, I've never tried another brand a Freewell filter, but uh, except Freewell, but the, none of the Freewell filters it it fails. Uh, and most of my little drones, the Spark, it, it couldn't pass the gimbal test uh, most of the time on, on, with a filter on. And a lot of smaller drones have that issue. But I, that's what I'm saying. The uh, the Zeno 2 doesn't fall into the, the small, like, kind of drone, the mini drone that won't be able to do that. It, 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 not, it, you know, it not only flies robustly, but it has a robust gimbal. It may have some micro jitters, but, uh, you know, it, it can it can move some weight around. Well, you know... Um and the last subject for the Zeno 2 uh, discussion tonight is the ribbon cable. Now, our friend Chad B., uh, he experienced an issue with his ribbon cable, and Hubson is probably sending it to him by slow boat. And our resident ribbon cable expert in the house, <laughs> Mr. Marcus Crawford there, um, he found one on AliExpress, and he posted a link. And, Marcus, if you could post that link in the chat tonight, that it's funny you mentioned that. Look at the chat. <laughs> well, guess who joined us? Looked like Lauren. Lauren's in the house. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Hey, excellent. Lauren's here. But I, I did post that. Uh, your your I, timing was impeccable, Lauren, because we're just finishing up with Zeno 2 discussion. Okay. I think you timed it right. <laughs> 
<laughs> as far as that's just concerned. lucky, I guess. <laughs> you tied, your, your timing was impeccable. So, um, well, Lauren. But um, you know, just to just to kind of kind of tie things up with with the ribbon cable issue, um, you know, Chad had the experience where you know he lost FPV and um, couldn't figure out what it was, and then found out it was the ribbon cable. So, and apparently that's a simple replacement fix for us if we have the part. Now, Marcus was able to find that part for I believe about ten bucks on AliExpress. And he's already got one ordered, which is smart. And I think, you know, um, I'm going to do that when I get paid as well, too. And, uh, you know, and, well, fortunately, I know Ron and Marcus haven't had that issue yet. Which which paycheck is that, Bill? The one from Uncle Sam or the one from Publix? <laughs> the one from Publix. That's that's on Thursday. That one's coming sooner than, than the one from Uncle Sam. Hey, I heard news today. I hear Lauren's getting a paycheck, too, from uh, from the prime minister. Oh really? That that's what they said. They said everybody in Canada is going to get paid. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, that's, that's the first news I've heard. Yeah. Well, Lauren <laughs> got more money for his drone fund. <laughs> so, um, your guys' thoughts, Marcus, Ron, on well, the, the cable. I I just think because we've seen enough failures with it, not not a huge amount. So it's not like everybody's cable fails, but for ten bucks. To be able to get your drone back in the air the same day if it does happen to fail, why not? That's cheap insurance. Just keep that thing uh, in there. And it is a user serviceable part. Uh, you know, there's no soldering. There's things that, I, I mean, I think any of us in here could probably replace it. So it, it seemed prudent. And I did put that link in the chat, uh, Thank Bill. Thank you, Marcus. Good. Thank you, Marcus. Yeah. That's excellent. It, it seems like a, um, you know, a, a much less um, – Intensive uh, repair issue than what um, Blue Skyver came across, where the um, yeah. the mic the micro USB port uh, came off the motherboard inside his controller, and when he tried to take it to a shop and have it repaired, solder back on, he it, 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 he didn't have FPV anymore, so he uh, Hups did wind up sending him another controller. But uh, so we we've had a couple um, we we'll call them hardware issues. And, uh, you know, uh, we don't know. I mean, uh, Blue Skyward was one of the very first people in North America, at least that has a YouTube channel, that, that received one. And Chad B was pretty early, too. So maybe these models, you know, uh, maybe by the time ours rolled off the factory line, maybe these issues may have been taken care of. I mean, we'd like to think of whatever. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, because, uh, I mean, uh, Laura knows this. You know, even with DJI drones, there could be some – QC quality control issues with some early models uh, 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 of any of any product, really, not just drone, you know. Oh, there's always teething problems. Question of the day. Do you have a stability issue with your Xeno 2? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, it's a great day to fly. Uh